Yeah. So, uh, hello Bezad, uh, and welcome to Yash, and uh, thank you very much for accepting to participate in, uh, in this exhibition, which has a title which has a lot to do with your like, regular work. Uh, the title is Micronarratives, or the translation in Romania of something in English which is Micronarratives. Um, we, we would like maybe to have a little discussion with you about uh, what micro-narratives, like how you use this term in your practice, in your regular practice, and maybe later on we can develop some mm. kind of dialogue if possible. Mm. So thank you very much again for accepting this and also for accepting to make a little interview with us. Thank you very much. Pure pleasure to be here. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, um, I really like the title. Macro narratives, of course, is very important. I, I really like to. Uh, I think it's very much. It's very crucial to think about the macro narrations, and it's very important to think that how is it possible to to bring the notion of macro history and macro narrative into contemporary art. So this is, of course, one thing that is very important for me. But mm -hmm. if I want to talk about macro or macro narration, I think the very important things that we have to discuss before entering into the notion of macro, mm -hmm. is, the, is, is macro, is the grand narration. So, uh, the, the, my argument usually is that uh, we, we don't know what is grand narration, because we take it for granted. So, and the other thing that is very interesting for me is the relationality, connectivity, and the intersectionality between macro and macro. Mm -hmm. So always I think that, you know, we take it for granted that we know what is macro because, you know, of course it's grand, it's very much visible. But grand narration or macro narration is absolutely invisible mm -hmm. in hyper-visibility. Hyper mm -hmm. You know, it's everywhere, you see it everywhere and you take it for granted and, it. and you think that, okay, so of course it's a kind of natural phenomenon, you don't really mm -hmm. question that because of course there is something happening, of course that grand narration is actually kind of uh, uh, maybe in the exaggerated word colonize the way that we are thinking. Mm -hmm. So maybe the first step in order to understand what is macro narrative is to understand what is grand narration. Mm -hmm. So and after that of course you could challenge the idea. So this is actually interesting for me to, to, to kind of explore that what is happening in that relationship between macro and micro? Mm -hmm. The very small so spot. Maybe as a start of uh, our little conversation here, maybe you can tell us a few words about the work that we, are, we, we show mm -hmm. on this occasion, which is called the short story about the cat. And is, um, well, you told, me, you told me that this is some kind of visit card for your practice. Uh, what do you mean by that, and how is uh, this connected with the, with the, with like the macro? 
macro narratives mm -hmm. and because it's it's obvious it, it is some kind of micro narrative but it also it also contains some kind of indication of a macro mm -hmm. politicized mm -hmm. narrative yeah, it's true um, uh, basically the work is uh, is the very um, um, uh, two two minutes of or one minutes of one uh, long documentary film, which uh, was about uh, war in between Iran and Iraq in 1984, and uh, the document the documentary basically started in 1984, and the narration goes to to 1990s. So basically, it was nar narrated the whole conflict in the region, specifically about uh, relationship between Iran and Iraq. And I was watching that documentary, and suddenly I saw the very small part that. Uh, in the middle of the war that I guess that is Iranian part, which, you know, based on the form of guns that they are using and form of custom that they have, I, I imagine that it could be the Iranian part. Uh, in the middle of battlefield, there is a cat is escaping. Mm -hmm. So um, I present it as a kind of like a visit card for my work because yeah. it's very much, I'm very much working with materiality of the history. I'm very working with archive. I'm very much interested in the storytelling. I'm very much interested in, in micro narrations as the way that we are discussing right now. And also the other thing that is very important for me, the agonistic relationship between macro and micro, mm -hmm. that somehow uh, uh, this um, very short story about the cat presents that agonistic relationship. You know about the war. You know, even I, I think that even the director or filmmaker of, of that uh, documentary didn't really notice that cat is escaping. So, and of course, you know, it creates some sort of nice gesture into the idea of grand narration of the war. That mm -hmm. what is happening. Yeah. So I'm not really in that film. Um, um, completely different uh, compared to the other works that uh, I do, uh, because very short. Uh, uh, I'm not really exploring about what happened for the cat. So this actually could be another interesting uh, exploration. But I'm presenting the cat that is escaping. So we have the grand narration of, of order of the wall. Mm -hmm. that you know we know that how is it possible to present it in for example in the documentary escape you know there is a battlefield there is a kind of showing the conflict and then suddenly uh, accidentally there's the there's another story mm -hmm. which challenged the idea of the of the actual war mm -hmm. so in that case of course it's a kind of like a visit card because it's a, a sort of gesture of everything that I'm interested in. Yes, and in the sense it was also some kind of challenge for, for, for the project you were, you were involved while you discovered this piece. So maybe you can tell us a bit more about what you were doing, like what were you researching? Well, it, my research is very much based on um, um, uh, there's a term that I'm trying to explore around it that uh, I call it uh, hyper-politicized time, place and body. So and by, by call it hyper-politicized or hyper-politics, uh, I uh, um, somehow define the, the environment or time or place which has been colonized by the grand narration of, of hegemonic order. And this hegemonic order is somehow uh, bring the idea of, of political narrativity within the social environment, mm -hmm. which the only news that you get from them is is from breaking news. So and after that, you know, always you say, oh, of course, in the Middle East there is a war. And after that, yes, I cannot really challenge that idea. Yes, there is a war, there is a conflict. But could we just simply follow that idea and narration and just repeating ourselves, or putting mirror in front of the mirror, or methodologically creating another form of uh, narration in order to prove the grand narration. So it could be actually some sort of challenge about the notion of microhistory, because there is some sort of, in my point of view, um, the, the falsehoodness uh, regarding to the way that uh, some scholars define microhistory, which is the microhistory is the small branch of macro history, which I challenge that idea, because I think uh, 
if we, if we just follow the small stories without thinking the relationality that the small story has with uh, grand marriage, we are not mm-hmm. really doing anything. Mm-hmm. So we are just proving the idea that everybody knows. But how, how, is, this, uh, how, are, how, how is this relationship reflected in the, in the work itself? I realized that uh, at some point there is really annoying sound. So it's really uh, filling the room and it's very, very powerful and uh, you can't really go next to it. Mm. So does this has to do with, with your view? Like is, is this relation between micro and, and macro narrative also reflected in the work itself? Somehow I, I try to material. Of course it's a kind of like a simple attempt to, to materialize that. The, the best way that I found to, I, to, to, to work with the idea of how politics is, is, is um, uh, from the perspective of artistic research. So mm-hmm. this is the long-term exploration, long-term discussion. Mm-hmm. But I, in, in my work, for example, by your question, previous question was, of course, it's a part of the small part of the bigger uh, project, which, was, which I was looking at the um, Swedish television. The, uh, I was digging the archive of Swedish television from 1976 when uh, multiculturalism started to be practiced in, 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 in Sweden uh, until 2011 that I have the archive. So I was working with the archive from Swedish television, uh, 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 state television. And uh, um, the, the, this is the British documentary films, but they presented in 1984 in television, in Swedish television. And I was just looking at the notion of hyper, the, the, how media has presented the hyper-politicized social environment in that sense. And, uh, and uh, so it's not very uh, strange to, to see that, of course, the things that we know about Middle East is based on war, mm. based on lack of human rights, especially mm. uh, against women. And, uh, um, and, and, uh, and uh, revolution plays a very important role. And of course, recently nuclear. Mm-hmm. So, and everything, of course, is somehow connected to that, to those keywords. Mm-hmm. So we cannot really disregard. And I agree. You know, of course, you have to be conscious about the way that you're discussing, and you cannot simply disregard your um, mm-hmm. uh, political agency as an artist uh, uh, and just talk, start to talk about something else. But, mm-hmm. but is not something else. I call it elseness. And the mm-hmm. elseness is actually the potentiality of being something else. And that potentiality of being something else has a critical and agonistic identity, which mm-hmm. always try to create some sort of negotiation and try to, to, to question that, uh, 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 that uh, you know, uh, taking for granted the notion of grand narration. In order to bring in other things, because I mm-hmm. think I believe those kind of hyper-politicized social environment, such as Middle East or in different conditions, of course you can see that is happening. Uh, it has uh, the complexity of that uh, environment has a lot of uh, potentials in order to to be discovered within the realm of contemporary art, and we cannot re- simply simplify the compl- com- conflict. Mm-hmm. So. And yeah, so maybe in that sense, macro narratives um, doesn't try to simplify the complexity, mm-hmm. neither complexify simplicity. So we try actually kind of. Uh, let's try to simplify the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm sorry, it was just. Uh, I, I'm uh, a bit tired, mm. so it's a bit. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I wanted to ask you two things, like what, what, uh, how do you feel in Sweden and what, what, what do you do there? Mm. Because I know that you're like a PhD researcher at uh, Konstfak, mm. which is a very well-known institution, in, uh, like art institution in Sweden. And I would also like to, to ask you about how you uh, first uh, encountered uh, Romania, because here Uh, we we are like taught that Middle East is very far away and there is a, like media blockage. So there is no, you know. But actually, if you turn off this FM 
like radio FM scale and you put it on the long range, you, you will like uh, immediately immerse in, in uh, a world of sounds which is completely uh, unknown to us, but it's actually very close. And it happened to me several times that I couldn't find any mm -hmm. FM radio and then I'm like browsing around in this radio scale and like, uh, I don't know, encounter very, very uh, specific Middle Eastern sounds. Mm -hmm. So it's actually very, it's much closer than they, they tell us that it is. You know? So oh, yes. we also, we also encounter that uh, closeness in, in the way we cook and in the way we mm -hmm. So there are m more similarities, I think, but we are taught to, to, to regard ourselves as like separated by some mm -hmm. really big world. I think the very important question in that sense is uh, when the, no, the, the idea of internationalism became culturalist. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the main problem. Because, um, you know, uh, of course we share a lot of things. Mm -hmm. and, and this uh, notion of sharing is not new really. You know, it started from a long time ago, historical background, you know, Ottoman Empire, etc., etc. If you look at grand narration of historical order, you see a lot of relationality in that mm -hmm. sense. But it's not just, just uh, about that. As you mentioned, you know, the way that you're living, you know, for example, Romania. In Romania, if you look at it from outside, there's two grand narrations, or one very specific grand narration, that there was a communist past, mm -hmm. there was a revolution in 1989, and everything was fine. But everything is not fine. <laughs> So, and after that, there is some sort of a stereotypical relation, uh, narration, mm -hmm. in order to define what is happening there. Mm -hmm. So, the kind of, uh, the, the, the definition of Balkan, which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, blood and honey, mm -hmm. so always, you know, is embedded in the, in the social and political identity of Romania. So, mm -hmm. we have honey part, but mm -hmm. it's bloody. <laughs> so, you can see it, of course. So, but, uh, but it's very important to, to know again, you know, the things that you immediately, the, the idea, the image that immediately came to your mind is actually part, is, is from somewhere, mm -hmm. you know that. And after challenging that idea needs, of course, mm -hmm. micro-scale investigation mm -hmm. in order to discover something else. And that something else actually creates solidarity. Mm -hmm. That else-ness creates solidarity. Mm -hmm. That else-ness suggests the idea that, well, we are actually part of darker nations. The darker nations are the nations that they're, you know, colonized by the grand narration of political order in order to, to, to define the others. Mm -hmm. And, of course, defining the others doesn't have any problem, but otherizing others mm -hmm. in order to, to create self-identity is problematic. Mm -hmm. so, so, basically, in Sweden, I'm trying to challenge the same idea. Mm -hmm. that you, we, you cannot really otherize the other. We have to try to find solidarity. We have to find the similar form of memory, identity, which actually connects us, not separate us. And of course, sounds very romantic, but yeah, let's, let's be romantic in that sense, because of course, you know, again, the question is very important to raise that when internationalism became culturalist. Mm -hmm. There's a hypothesis, there's different hypotheses about that, you know, there's a special time for that, there's a suggestion of <laughs> what happened really in that period of time, which was um, mid-70s. And of course that notion of diversity, which uh, in the beginning, you know, sounds very, sounded very kind of affable and interesting, uh, uh, has became uh, the sort of excuse in order to divide the others from yeah. and make the, the, the division between them. And also, you know, of course, you know, in the global uh, um, political or social identity that, you know, the word is claiming the representation of outside and outside, there is actually a representation of inside and inside. And the object of the mirror are closer to you than you expect <laughs> all the time. You know, that's why as soon as you, you see that, you know, you, you see the relationality. For example, there's a cinema outside. Yeah. 
or outside transit. Cinema so, Republica, yeah. So basically, this is the cinema that I have memory, you know, because the cinema in Tehran was designed by the same aesthetical attitude. Yeah. So it shows actually what happened during the 60s, 70s. Mm -hmm. And there was a very strong, or neighborhood that I, uh, I, I grew up in Iran, in Tehran, was very much sort of uh, brutalism. Yeah. So yeah, is you know when when I'm in the Eastern Bloc, always I think that yeah I can I can immediately recognize myself. It's kind of like a, a strange nostalgia that I have about the urban planning because it reminds me of my home. So and it's very strange to see that. So welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. So thank you so much for the interview yeah. and. Uh, and when you're tired, you're, you you ask complicated questions. Oh my God. Be no. tired. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs>